I greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are at lesson seven on killing. Let us begin the word of prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day which thou hast made, that we can gather together to learn of thy word. And may thou grant unto us thy wisdom and understanding, help us to be doers of thy word and not hearers only. Help us, O oh Lord, that we may learn precious lessons in thy word and help us to apply thy word into our life. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, of all our sins, and we commit all this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us turn to our passage in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26. Please follow me as I read this passage. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Baka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. But really I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out ten, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. May God bless the reading of his holy and precious word. Now what comes to your mind when you think of killing? We know that it is not about killing animals. If it is about killing animals, then we will all end up becoming vegetarian. No, it is not about killing animals. Some people chose to be vegetarians because they believe that it is a cruel thing to kill animals. But the Bible did not prohibit killing animals for food. And so this commandment is about killing people. And more specifically, it is about killing people under unlawful means. We know that only those with authority, like the judges in the courtroom, the police, and all these are the ones given the authority to kill. We know that those caught trafficking drugs or found guilty in kidnapping another person, the penalty is death. And so this kind of killing we know is justifiable. And it is the right thing to do. And why do you think the police are armed with a pistol ready to shoot anytime? They shoot when a life is a stick. And sometimes when they shoot, they kill. Similarly in the army, when war comes, there will be killing as armies of both countries fight against each other. Well, like the Ukraine war, which is still ongoing right now. How many are killed already? But we know that all these do not fall under what the Bible says and, and taught about killing. It is the unjustified, it is the unlawful killing which is prohibited. However, we know that it is more than that because 
the Lord sought to explain what it means to break this commandment. Because if killing is only when the act of taking a human life is done, then this commandment number six is a very easy commandment to keep. No problem at all. Even the people in the Lord time thought the same thing. Because we read in verse 21, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But only when the act is committed, only when the killing, the actual killing is done, and then the one who is caught, and then the one who is found guilty of killing, so based on verse 21, he shall be in danger of the judgment. So in other words, the one who has done the killing will be punished. Now man is only concerned with the act, okay, the actual act of killing. But the Lord is going to deal with everything even before the act is committed. Okay, even before the killing is done. So what leads to killing? What makes one want to kill? Is it not anger? And that is exactly what the Lord wants to address you know, on this topic on killing. Because killing begins with anger. So in other words, in order to prevent killing, it is not just knowing what kind of punishment will come for killing. But it is how to stop killing. We must stop what leads to killing. And that is anger. Look at verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's all Jesus says. But, in other words, Jesus is saying, that killing is not just the act alone. Even before the act, there is a possibility of breaking the sixth commandment already. Although the word but is a very powerful conjunction to make us rethink again. But I say unto you, Jesus said, whatever Jesus is saying here, we must listen. For his word is authoritative. His word is God's word. So there is no option for us to do otherwise. We must always hear him. We must always obey him. And so Jesus says, But whosoever is angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. Now remember earlier it was killing that shall be in danger of the judgment. But now... Jesus says, just by becoming angry without a cause, it is already in danger of the judgment. Why? Because killing begins with anger. And so if you are angry with a person without a cause, you have already killed him. And that is very serious. And God does not want us to even have that beginning. God wants us to deal with that anger that might lead to killing. But does that mean that anger is always a sin? Anger is an emotion. It is an emotion which all of us have. And even God has it. In the Bible, we read of so many occasions when God himself had this emotion of anger when he is angry with sin. How his wrath burned with anger against sin and against the sinner. So anger is a very common and normal emotion. But so we must understand that it is not wrong or sinful to be angry for a judge call. Ah, it must be for a judge call. In fact, we must be angry for a just cause. What is a just cause? 
For example, a judge court is when someone tries to cheat you of your money. Will you not be angry? I'm sure you will not be happy when someone is trying to take advantage of you. Well, if you're not angry, something is wrong. Someone enters your house, break your things in your house. Will you not be angry? And so there are many things which fall under just cause. And we must be angry. But over here, Jesus says, without a cause, or without a just cause, and then we get angry. And such an anger is a sin. So without a cause or a just cause means that, for example, I get angry when you are better than me. I get angry when your house looks nicer than my house. I get angry when you can go to further country for holiday. Rather than for me, I can only go nearby. All these are unjust causes. And so it is important for us what we are angry about. Why are we angry? Is it for something that is just or unjust? If it is unjust, then do not even let the emotion of anger start. We must control. Because killing begins with such an anger. And so we need to be very careful. Now, not only that, when we are angry even for a just cause, the Lord wants us to control ourselves. When we are super angry, what words can come out of our mouth when we do not control ourselves? Well, we read on. Then Jesus says, Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Or whosoever shall say, Thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Now be it known to you that even in your anger for a judge court, it is possible to say something that is sinful. And the Lord has just shown us how it is possible. Now what is the word raka? Now raka means empty. Raka means worthless. It is telling someone, you are a worthless person. You are a useless person. So especially when you come to work, and then when you're very angry with this person, yeah, you got no brain. So simple task. Also do not know how to do it. Worthless. Now, even if it is true that this person cannot function, it is still wrong of us to call him names, to call him worthless, to scold him, injure him, and how to hurt him. But well, that's why Jesus says, no, if you say Raka, you shall be in danger of the council. And this council is the Jewish council, not the Sanhedrin council, which is a religious body to govern the morality of the Jewish people. And so that was in those days where they have this council okay, to, to govern the people. And this council possesses the right to punish anyone for calling people bad name or try to destroy their reputation. But there is another word that is even more serious. Jesus says, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Thou fool. In other words, it is saying, You moron. Well, that's what the, the fool is based on. Moron. And there is a very serious implication known to the people in those days. You know, when you call someone, Thou fool, because it is a form of curse. Okay, by saying thou fool is a curse word, you are condemning the person. It's more than raka, it's more serious than raka. 
It's more than just hurting the person. It is cursing the person. It is condemning the person. And it was so serious that Jesus says that those who said thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. We must be careful with our word. Even if you are right, even for a just cause, we must be careful with our word. We must not resort to name calling or personal attack or whatever that seeks to destroy the person's character and name. We must control our anger. Always do the right thing. Yet we must address the wrong, we must address the sin. We must be angry, but at the same time, do not sin. We must be gracious, we must be forgiving. Be ye angry and sin not. Say words that build, not destroy. Say words that direct the person to Christ and not to condemnation. Who are we to condemn? Who are we to curse someone? Though he may be in the wrong. We have the responsibility to direct the person to the right path. We are not to kill him with our anger. To kill him begin with anger. So take note of this. Now, under the same commandment of killing, the Lord gave two more scenarios how we are to obey the sixth commandment rightly. Now, the first scenario is we are to seek reconciliation. We see that in verses 23 and 24. Jesus says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and then rememberest, that thy brother had ought against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. When we come to worship God, God wants us to worship him with nothing that holds us back. God wants us to worship him with a clear conscience. And so the Lord gave us this scenario. He wants us to seek reconciliation. It can be a broken relationship. It can be an unresolved matter that has hindered our worship. And in this scenario, it was a case of a brother who is angry with us. But he did not say who is right or who is wrong. Why is this brother angry with us? We do not know. It could, be, it could be something that we have done that made him angry. But whatever it is, it does not matter because the Lord wants us to seek reconciliation. Well, if, if it is his fault, not our fault, it is his fault, forgive him because we want to seek reconciliation. And if it is our fault, we seek forgiveness. And the reason why we seek forgiveness is because we want to seek reconciliation. But that's the whole purpose over here. Because without reconciliation, it is hard for us to continue to worship God. Both for us and for that brother in Christ who is angry with us. Seek reconciliation. In many matters of conflict, the fault often lies on both parties. Well, it's only a matter of who is more wrong than the other or who is more right than the other. But if both are wrong, then both to say sorry. But will, will we be the first to seek reconciliation? Will we be the first to say sorry? That's what the Lord wants us to do, isn't it? Seek reconciliation. I thought this is the first thing we see over here, the first scenario. And then the second scenario is that we are to seek forgiveness. 
12, we see in verses 25 and 26. Jesus says in verse 25, Agree with thy adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him. Let at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out tense till thou hast paid the uttermost party. Well, the reason why we seek forgiveness is not because we do not want to be punished. Who wants to be punished? Nobody wants to be punished. But if we have done something wrong, we must be punished. And so we must not seek to get out of that punishment. That must not be our attitude. We must get rid of such thought in our mind. We must always be ready to bear the consequences of our wrongdoing. But we deserve it. However, we must still seek forgiveness. Because if we do not seek forgiveness, what does it mean? Well, it means that we do not admit that we are wrong. It means that we have not learned our lesson well. But the Lord wants us to learn our lesson by seeking forgiveness. That's why in verse 25, he called upon us to agree with thy adversary quickly. Please understand that this is not compromising at all. It does not mean trying to get away. No, agree with thy adversary. It means to make up with him. Seek forgiveness. Say sorry for the wrong that we have done. And be prepared to pay back whatever we owe plus interest. Seek forgiveness. Do not live with me. In fact, the Lord gave the scenario of a legal case. It is a case when I have caused the other party to suffer long. And because I did not resolve it with him, it is about to bring it to the law court for them to take over. And so the Lord says, we must not let this happen. Resolve the matter quickly before that happens. If not, the price to pay will be even heavier. And what is this price? Well, this price is our testimony for Christ. There will be a stake. As long as we are not forgiven, this thing will keep hanging on our head until we are forgiven. So the Lord wants us to eat the humble pie and seek forgiveness. It is not easy to do that. Do that. The Lord knows. And yet it is what we must do. Seek forgiveness. I'm sure we know what it means to be forgiven. Because we have been forgiven of all our sins. And what a relief we felt inside. When we know our sins are all forgive, forgiven. Do we not seek forgiveness when we have done something wrong to one another? Well, in so doing, by seeking reconciliation, by seeking forgiveness, we keep the sixth commandment rightly. And so it is so amazing how the sixth commandment is to be understood in this manner. There has never been taught like this before. We don't even have to commit the act of killing in order to break the sixth commandment. All it takes is unjustified anger. We have broken the commandment. And even in justified anger, but not controlled rightly, the commandment is also broken. So let us always seek reconciliation for any broken relationship and be ready to seek forgiveness for the sake of our testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it goes a long way for you and I. 
to keep the sixth commandment in our life. And so may God help us to keep this wonderful commandment to the glory of our God who loves us and saved us for his own eternal glory. May God help us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for thy precious word. Forgive us for the many times how we have not been obedient to thy word and how we have kept our pride and also our anger that is not for a just cause. And even for a just cause, O oh Lord, we have not kept our anger in control. How about, O oh Lord, that we may always remember thy word, that we might not sin against thee. How about always to seek reconciliation? How about always to seek forgiveness for the wrong that we have done? For the Lord, we know that thou art our God who loved us and want us to obey thee by living a holy life, to shine the gospel light in our lives that others may be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ and to find salvation in him. How about, O oh God, and we commit the rest of this Lord's day unto thy hand. Commit all this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet again, thank you and God bless.